तव कथात तप्त जीवन कविरीड़ कलमशापहम श्रवणमंगल श्रीमदात भुवि गृणंती भूरीदा जना टुडे इज अ होली डे जयंती बर्थडे ऑफ श्रीमद स्वामी सुबोधानंद जी महाराज इन सिक्सटीन डायरेक्ट डिसाइपल्स सन्यासी डिसाइपल्स ऑफ श्री राम कृष्णा ईच हैज अ यूनिक प्लेस एंड श्री राम कृष्णा हैज ब्रॉड देम टू हिम फॉर अ यूनिक रोल इन हिज लीला इन हिज प्ले डिवाइन प्ले सो दिस सुबोधानंद जी एज अ वेरी सिंपल लाइक अ चाइल्ड all through his life till the end such a simple that shri ram krishna gave him the name khoka khoka in bengali means small boy so in the order ram krishna sangha khoka maharaj is the name of subodhananda ji very simple guileless innocent the ultimate truth the brahman is very simple the philosophers and uh, the uh, different uh, arguing people they make it more complicated so truth is simple and can be attained only by becoming simple truth the reality ultimate reality is the nature it is not artificial it is a natural thing and that is simple so by being simple this simple truth the ultimate truth which is with us which is everywhere can be attained and can be realized can be experienced so this child like mystic khoka maharaj he realized the truth very quickly shri ram krishna said in later we will see that because of this uh, such a simple child like nature the person can attain the the realization very quickly so the subodh chandra ghosh is pre monastic name was born on 8th november 1867 at shankar ghosh lain shankar ghosh was his grandfather's grandfather that's what is written in the records very very great devout person of kali mother kali he used to worship and uh, mother has blessed him and his guru has told to install the mother there and uh, siddheshwari kali temple is there in his birthplace in thantania in calcutta all of our uh, sadhus whenever they go devotees also they visit this tantaniya temple so this tantaniya kali temple siddheshwari kali temple belongs to the family it is a family deity of our subodh maharaj koka maharaj subodhanand ji his father's name is krishnadas ghosh mother name is nayantara this kali temple was visited many times by shri ram krishna when shri ram krishna was living after coming from kamarpukur he came and first settled in jhamapukur the area where the toll was there sanskrit toll and his elder brother was taking the classes in the initial period 1852 to 55 so that time his kali temple he has visited his house also visited by shri ram krishna and he knew later he says that i knew that you will be coming that time he was not born there was no indication but he said to him that i knew that you will be coming to me this father of our subodh maharaj was a follower of brahma samaj that time in calcutta keshav chandra sen has started and the many young educated youth got attracted towards this brahma samaj and in a way they protected the hindu religion they protected the sanatana dharma in that way 
So this educated youth used to circulate some teachings of Brahma Samaj and this uh, Krishna Das, his father used to take Subodh Maharaj also for these programs. And uh, sometimes his father has told him that uh, Keshav Chandra Sen has visited Sri Ram Krishna and that is how the father himself introduced Sri Ram Krishna's teachings to Subodh. His mother used to tell, he was very uh, fond of stories, stories from the Puranas. In later years, he used to narrate all those stories to the devotees and to the brahmacharis. Puranas and Ramayana, Mahabharata, etc. He had some very small, uh, you can say, real child. So, the afraid, afraid of water. Swimming, he did not know the swimming. So, Sri Ramakrishna asked him, go by boat. He said, no, I don't know swimming. If suppose boat sinks, what, what will I do? So, a simple answer, straightforward, very straightforward. Darkness, he was afraid of darkness. So, one day the thing happened and the mother, divine mother, removed the fear of darkness because he was, he knew somehow with the intuition that he, ha- he has a life of Parivrajaka. He will be taking sannyasa and moving from place to place. So, there will be, say, definitely he has to uh, face the darkness. So, he was worried about it and uh, he got that fear of darkness got removed. He was a brilliant student, fond of mathematics. We all know Shashi Maharaj also was fond of mathematics. So, ma- mathematics people will be sharp, very sharp. And when uh, in those days, the teenagers, they used to get married. The family people, they will arrange the marriage in 17, 18 year age. So, his father told, you are studying good after this 10th standard or something like that. At that time, whatever. See, the, after this schooling, we will, if you get good marks, we will arrange your marriage with a, because they were a very rich family. He got afraid. He said to his father, Father, don't drown me in the family life. Family life is not for me. Father understood that he is a child, childlike person. He eh, is a child, what he knows. So, he said, okay, okay, you first study. Then he understood that father will not leave him. I had to, I will have to obey the father. So, then he got a trick and uh, he did not study at all. He said, if I uh, study, I will get good marks. He fail in the exam. Fail in the exam, 8th standard. And then again the teachers told, he has to again once more sit in the 8th standard. Then his father got a bit upset. What is this? He shifted the school itself. No, you don't study in the school. He shifted the, the Vidyasagar school. And there, the headmaster was Mahindranath Gupta the famous Master Mahasha Yam. And uh, there again, the Sulabhata, the Subodh Maharaj got acquaintance with the headmaster, that is Master Mahasha. Anyway, so Subodh read the book titled Sri Ramakrishna's Teachings in Bengali and uh, got impressed. Really, God is a God exists. My mother also told me so many stories. Here Kali worship we do, day night, puja is done. If God exists, I should see the God. Can we see the God? And here is a person who has told God can be seen in that book. Very much impressed and wanted to see Sri Ramakrishna. He asked his father, please take me to Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa. Then father said, yes. On a holiday trip, we will have a picnic there. There is a Dakshineshwar on the bank of the Ganges. We will we'll go on a holiday. Where a holiday, a holiday will be long. This child could not restrain his longing to see Sri Krishna. He was not knowing what exactly the Paramahamsa means. Paramahamsa means a magician or what? God-man. So, he and his friend, Kshirod, both went 
started for dakshineshwar on the way they uh, some of went far away from dakshineshwar they did not know the proper route somehow they lost the way and again asking somebody very tired came to dakshineshwar reached dakshineshwar and here they saw that shri ram krishna is sitting in his room maybe around 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the afternoon and talking to the devotees these two approached then subod says to kshirod you go in the front i am afraid i don't know how to meet such a god person paramamsa means what to do i don't know etiquettes anyway kshirod was bit daring he went in front and uh, saluted the master with folded hands then shri ram krishna saw the subodh that hiding behind the kshirod then he calls him who is there the gentleman why are you so far away please come near me that's what the shri ram krishna tells subodh and uh, so he got the daring and went in front come come sit near me no 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 how can i sit near you like that then they went uh, shri ram krishna says you are one you are from this place you belong to this place then the conversation started as if shri ram krishna knows everything about this boy are you from the family of the shankar ghosh he asked then so maharaj says what how this person knows how did you know no no i knew earlier i used to visit your family and i knew that this from this family one child will come here so if you knew then why you have brought me in 1885 he went in 1885 why you have not brought me earlier if you knew me then he said that mother divine mother does not allow before the time arrives time has to come then only uh, things happen then only that is why you came this time this is the right time you belong to this place so subodh maharaj became bit relaxed and then uh, master again and again was telling he was telling him to sit on the cot he said i have just now returned from the school his clothes are not good so many people i have touched you are a holy person how can i sit is it uh, my clothes are not clean dirty etc then Mar- uh, guru mara says you are belonging to this place you are my very own what is there if it is dirty or if it is <laughs> not clean so it does not matter at all so that way he uh, just made them both subodh and kshirod and then when the mat was spread on the ground and they sat on the ground told uh, subodh that you come on tuesdays and saturdays very straight forward subodh anand ji he said no no i cannot come tuesdays and thursdays uh, tuesdays and uh, saturdays are i am telling you come on tuesdays and saturdays come once i have told i cannot uh, take back my words whatever i un- uh, pronounce it because it has to become truth so you come and uh, subodhanand ji khoka maharaj and kshirod next saturday came to dakshineshwar the second visit always the thought of ramakrishna paramahamsa is going on their in their mind they reached the on saturday directly from the school where to tell to the house people because they will be afraid then master when uh, guru maharaj saw them many people were sitting on saturday the room is full they peeped inside then shri ram krishna said you stay there itself he himself came out and took these two boys to the shiva temple there is a indakshineshwar shiva temples are there near uh, his room one shiva temple he 
took them to the stairs asked them to sit there and uh, started uh, stroking their head and the uh, back asking them to uh, take out the tongue they on the tongue he has written the mantra and that is how the mantra diksha was done for both of them he asked them to meditate subodh maharaj went into ecstasy after the mantra is written and started meditating he saw all the gods and goddesses then he he went into deep meditation and found everything is joy full of joy after some time he saw that he is coming down to the normal consciousness and shri ram krishna is stroking again his head and his body from head to foot so chirod also was given the initiation then uh, but he did not experience this ecstasy etc shri ram krishna asked subodh you were you afraid then he said yes i was afraid I and mean, when i lost the consciousness i was afraid very simple you see guileless i was afraid what will happen acha what did you experience i experienced a deep meditation and the joy are do you meditate in your house yes whatever my mother has taught me about gods and goddesses that i remember and i meditate on that topic oh that is why you how you are already ready your mind is prepared so that is why your meditation was so deep and you got the experience the divine experience then the kshirod was telling but i did not experience anything then guru mara says you will also experience in course of time not now you will also at the right time you will also experience now then shri ram krishna said there is a master mahasha who is a headmaster of your school go to him then subodh says he is a householder sir what can he teach us he himself has so many difficulties he will be telling us about his difficulties only then guru mara says no no he is not like that he will only talk about me he will be only talking about the gods go to him ask and because he is near to you he is nearer to you you are not able to come every day here so go to master mahasha talk to him about the god talk to him about this place etc and uh, because that time his throat cancer guru maharaj throat cancer started treatment was started he was not able to speak the way he used to speak from 1881 we have seen the conversations in the gospel of shri ram krishna in 1885 this is this uh, drama you can say leela is happening with subodh maharaj so he says i am afraid of the ghost straightly he said sir i am afraid of the ghost what to do i feel some ghost may come if i am alone if i am in a dark place then shri ram krishna presses his thumb and, and the, between the eyebrows and the fear has gone from that day and he started seeing the light within that uh, the eyebrows between the eyebrows he tells his mother today shri ram krishna paramahansa has done something to me he has put his uh, thumb and uh, between the eyebrows i am seeing the light there in mother knew some spiritual uh, visions and all that she says it is a very high state don't tell anybody if you tell you will be losing it then as a child kokamara says what is there if i lose that earlier also i was not having i want to know that from which the light has come i don't want light i want that knowledge that reality from which the light comes so 
that is our straight answer and seeking the ultimate reality so meeting with the master mahashay many different topics about shri ram krishna they were discussing and master mahashay the mo the author of gospel of shri ram krishna said to him my complete the pride of my learning has been washed off by shri ram krishna's one sentence he says that knowledge is the only knowledge by which you know the reality you are able to attain the brahman which removes the ignorance the your degree of university degree knowledge is of no use then only i understood that this worldly knowledge is just for the bread and butter the ultimate reality the knowledge is the true knowledge which removes the ignorance then started coming to shri ram krishna very frequently as much as possible directly from the school sweating coming there running just to fan shri ram krishna in the hot sun he used to come himself sweating taking the fan and fanning shri ram krishna fanning the uh, master he himself refreshed felt refreshed the relation of the shri ram krishna and subodh maharaj or the disciples is such like a father and child relation shri ram krishna saw that subodh is sweating and came tired so he asked him to lie down and started fanning himself that is the relation of the Uh, guru and the disciple then shri ram krishna used to ask almost all the disciples and the close devotees that what do you think of me do you think of me as avatara do you think of me as a man what do you think of me subodh mara straight away he said many people they think of you as avatara but i am not considering like that unless and until some proof i get myself then only i will be able to believe in that shri ram krishna liked that answer very much and he said yes you must taste the person before believing him one day the devotees were dancing and singing kirtan in the shri ram krishna's room in the dakshineshwar and all devotees disciples were getting ecstasy dancing somebody singing somebody's uh, almost the like a jada somebody is in samadhi after the whole thing is over subodh is sitting there then shri ramakrishna said hey, it is time you have to go back all have gone no no i have one question who he is in reality who had the real ecstasy today i want to know because i saw everybody <laughs> so who had the real ecstasy today then shri ram krishna thought for a while and said yes you are right the latu only had the fullest extent of the uh, ecstasy all other had just small small experiences then the questions of khoka maharaj can one really see god shri ram krishna says yes again and again in every to every disciple to every devotee again and again guru maharaj has told yes god can be seen the way you see two people talking and walking together in the same manner god can be seen god can be talked with you have to always think and with yearning heart if you cry for him if you weep for his vision he will definitely the god will definitely give a vision you must know this for certain that i have a mother i have a divine mother and i am her son this relation with the god is the ultimate thing 
in the spiritual life three things shri ram krishna always insisted this we have heard in other disciples discussions topics the devotee has to understand who is shri ram krishna then who is that person who is devoted to shri ram krishna the disciple is who am i and what is the relation between the shri ram krishna and myself these are the three things a devotee or a disciple must know and this seeking this search is the spiritual life who is shri ram krishna who is that disciple and what is the relation between the shri ram krishna and the disciple this is the ultimate search and where this ends there the realization happens so that is how shri ram krishna went on guiding subodh in the spiritual life in the higher planes in the kali puja day of 1885 when they were in the shamar shampukur shampukur the all the disciples they decided to shift shri ram krishna from dakshineshwar to the better place so that it is a damp place and the doctor availability not there the serving also becomes difficult the disciples cannot visit frequently etc so because of that they uh, shifted him to shampukur first in 1885 in that september 1885 kali puja day we all know that kali puja the disciples the devotees have worshiped shri ram krishna as a mother, divine mother kali that uh, day subodh was very much anxious and wanted to see shri ram krishna master mahasha came to that kali temple where the siddheshwari kali temple where subodh he saw and subodh has asked i want to see shri ram krishna today today is auspicious day i want to see my guru then he said you please control yourself your house people will be worried they will not be allowing you then he makes a secret plan and in the night itself he goes by they be in the whole night kali puja we all know in the house people family people are engaged in the kali puja in their temple seeing all that he just secretly goes to the master where this dakshineshwar where is thantanya on foot he goes in the night surprisingly shri ram krishna sees him we all know from tentrania to dakshineshwar nam bus la pombode tired aidu avlo distance irke avlo it is so much uh, troublesome but the longing and yearning he says shri ram krishna are how are you have you come at this time he say i could not stay in my home i was so much anxious i could not i was restless i could not sleep in the last night day time also i was not uh, feeling comfortable i wanted to come and see you now i am peaceful this is the restlessness of the disciple for the guru so the illness of the master taking worst turn and subodh as a child he advises shri ram krishna that why don't you take tea hot tea if you take your throat will be all right we all take tea you so sir whenever our sore throat is there we take tea once twice and our sore throat goes away then shri ram krishna was also a child only then he asks rakhal rakhal ek khokha bolche khokha is telling that i should take hot tea so that then rakhal mara says sir you are already throat is paining if you take hot anything will that throat will bear pain will be increased then shri ram krishna understood oh yes yes, yes it is correct 
my to then he apologizes to khoka maharaj you see the fun he apologizes to khoka i cannot take tea you see my throat will be uh, will not tolerate that one so please excuse me i will not take i cannot take so that way this tea has a very great uh, thing in khoka maharaj life he was fond of tea so much that once in later years swami vivekananda was pleased with khoka maharaj on one occasion he was so much pleased that he said to khoka maharaj khoka you ask some boon i want to bless you you ask whatever you want then he said what i want i don't want anything then rakhal maharaj and others say are he is asking you ask something you ask <laughs> then he said acha you get, just bless me that i should get daily tea i should get daily at least once tea i should get so in later years we find in one incident after much means in 30s he was roaming about and moving and pilgrimage alone one day he did not get tea a much later yes na then we'll come back he did not get, he did not get tea he is uh, there in uh, uttarakhand then he says i did not get tea today what is the matter because nobody is there he, he is in a village in some remote area nobody is there he is staying in one uh, chatram nobody uh, he, the Hukam Maharaj had whenever he travelled he travelled on foot without shoes without upper garment that means without shirt without chata means without umbrella without money without any acquaintance so like that moving and with not asking anybody whoever gives he will take so i did not get tea he was worried as swami vivekananda has given the boon and how it will become now this is the test swami ji has given will it become false he became worried like a child our swami ji leader he has given boon then at the night 9:30 at 10 o'clock in that chatram one family came from outside that family came from outside and started opening their uh, boxes uh, for eating whatever they have brought and they oh, started tiffin open panna tiffin they started eating they saw one sadhu is sitting in the corner and that mother that amma asked the subodhananda ji baba ji aap chai lenge kya will you take tea baba ji will you take tea <laughs> so <laughs> subodhananda ji was in tears he says my leader has given the boon and it definitely gives the fruits so this is how the uh, the relation the uh, faith in the words of the guru faith in the words of the god so then master was shifted again coming back to the story master was shifted to kashipur in december 1885 and uh, he asked the master sir will i realize god will i really see god you are telling me to meditate this that etc i cannot meditate if i had to meditate why should i have come to you he said sir you cannot meditate if i would have to meditate i would have gone to some other person as a guru i have come to you as a paramahamsa so i will not i will not meditate then <laughs> shri ram krishna says laughingly uh, to others you see this fellow what the rascal kokat says he will not meditate anyway at least you remember me once in the morning and once in the evening that will do so till the end we see in his life till the end he has remembered master once in the morning once in the night once in the evening the last day also the there is a record 
that he was not able to say it he was completely bedridden but morning once he will just ask this uh, sevak to raise him up he will salute shri ram krishna's photo again lay down same way in the evening this is called as the faith and this is called that the longing so anyway master blessed him that yes you will realize god and in the future many people will learn from you after master's passing away subodh was very much restless now the person who was guiding me has gone so he left home one day he left home started walking towards the varanasi his house people were searching they got him into varanasi and again back ho- brought him back home he joined the baranagar monastery took the sanyasa got the swami subodhananda as the name traveled far and wide in india all the places wherever the temples he was so much longing for the vision of the god that he could not stay in one place as the description goes went on traveling on foot without resting and without having any acquaintance without having money without any clothes upper garment the whatever cloth on his body if the rain comes that cloth will get wet on the body itself that much austerity that much that much austere life so it is a kind of ideal sanyasi which we see in swami subodhananda maharaj life there are many incidents which are very yesterday we were talking so a kind of mystical ex- incidents are there magic uh, incidents so you can say uh, you ge- get the real how a sadhu can bless the devotees his disciples he was a guru in uh, subsequently he became guru and uh, he started initiating he was earlier not initiating the people then shivananda ji told him to initiate he started initiating the disciples uh, the reports are there records are there letters are there all those are now getting published from bengali to english so in that we see the real uh, the sadhu how the uh, disciple gets benefited by the guru's blessing one small incident we shall tell and conclude in uh, near uh, devgar devgar is a place where our school and all center is there he initiated one uh, person and one more person is uh, near balcony staying the two families this person passed away the person who was initiated passed away the nearby person did not know that time he saw subodhananda ji came and started uh, guiding this person taking this person by hand next day he asks that acha belur math theke kyu swami asche from the belur math any swami ji have come to your house no no this is the incident has happened that somebody has passed so and so person is passed away from our house acha we have see, i have seen the swami he is taking him by hand these are the incidents which clearly gives us the faith and the indication that they lead us the guru lead us to the god so there are many incidents like this especially in the life of uh, subodhananda ji maharaj very simple but uh, mystical person he will not 
uh, we will not know very free to access easy to access for the uh, other people outside people etc but very deep in his uh, life he came here in madras also on his way to kanyakumari rameshwaram madurai in 1897 gave one lecture on brahmacharya and sanyasa swami ji started ramkrishna math and mission in 1897 so he started that uh, everybody has to speak and there is a funny incident when the subodhananda maharaj turn comes he is not ready he does not want to speak in front of all this swami vivekananda is sitting all this uh, uh, abhidananda maharaj is sitting he says no no i am a bit afraid i do not nervous i am feeling no no you have to speak and when he gets up and starts speaking earthquake happens earthquake this is a <laughs> the famous earthquake of 12th june 1897 the swami ji later swami ji remarks the khoka made the earth shaking speech <laughs> relations with swami ji was very sweet khoka maharaj nobody could melt the swami ji's anger but khoka maharaj was the person who can approach and while seeing khoka maharaj swami ji used to forget all his this thing very simple person so khoka tumhe bolche thik ache so that is how the he had worked in really made in relief works rehabilitation during different calamities as a guru we have seen if we read in his biography we will see many more incidents many more inspiring things for our spiritual life so towards the end in 1927 once he became very ill but shri ramkrishna appeared to him and said this time you will you cannot go you will have to recover then he recovered then in 1932 this divine child of shri ramkrishna merged on 2nd december 1932 with his guru his last prayer was that the blessings of shri ramkrishna be always on the sangha be always on the order so may bhagwan shri ramkrishna holy mother swami vivekananda and swami subodhananda ji maharaj bless us all is our prayer om shanti 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 hari om tat sat Shri Ram Krishna Arpanamastu